All right, now, I'm going to show you a video, okay? And it's a short video. It's four minutes and 24 seconds. It's about the Oakland Raiders, okay, who I thought we did a wonderful job. We didn't have any off-season programs. They locked the players out, okay? It was four new guys on the offensive staff. New offensive coordinator. We did not run Hugh Jackson's offense that he had the year before. We put in Al Saunders' offense and ran that one, okay? So there's a brand new offense. Al, I think, is a wonderful football coach. I think he's led the NFL 12 different times at having a number one offense in the league. He's been coaching the league about 35 years, okay? He's a wonderful person to work for, and so was Hugh Jackson. And so we put that offense in. No off-season program. We didn't have a staff that was together for some years that was running the same offense. So when they got the players back, okay, it was relatively unchanged for them. They just, kept, they just put everything in and they, and they went. We had to start from scratch. We had to do it the old-fashioned way, okay, and how you did it way back when Jim McNally first got in the league where you saw your players, okay, for the first mini camp, and then you saw them again in July. Okay, so we had to coach that way. So all the stuff you're going to see in this little short video to tell you what we accomplished, okay, in this short period of time. And then I'm going to tell you what I think the main reason for that was. And I'll give you the statistics after we finish this. Go ahead. In their own, you know, they go in that room, they close the door, and they go to work. And uh, when you come out, you'd be surprised at how well the group's played. I mean, it's been a maligned group in the past. It's a group that's... Uh, I think has worked to earn respect of their teammates and uh, the people they play. Welcome back to the Raiders Report. I'm your host, JT. How about this offensive line? They're opening up holes and they're blocking for the NFL's leading rusher in Darren McFadden, and they're tied for first in the league with only giving up seven sacks on this young season. I got to tell you, I knew they'd be okay. I didn't think they'd come together this quick and be this good. And it all starts with their chemistry on the sideline. These guys are working. Those guys do a tremendous job with that group. It's a group that in training camp had critics concerned. A retooled offensive line full of unknowns and undecided, all under the tutelage of two first-year Raider coaches. And off McFadden, downhill breaks a tackle. The offensive line is fighting. It's just a very impressive what they're doing right now. But in this case, first year is simply a title as O-line coaches Bob Wiley and Steve Wisniewski bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to the Raiders' sideline. Wiley, now in his 18th year of professional coaching, is the perfect yin to Wisniewski's yang, an accomplished Raider offensive lineman for 13 years. Together, the tandem teach a fresh approach to an area of the game with which the Raiders had struggled. They're bringing some new fundamental techniques into the game for all the linemen. And then while they're doing that, they're teaching us to do it in camaraderie as, as, as a unit, uh, as a togetherness of brotherhood. To address the issues of the O-line, most glaring, poor quarterback protection that resulted in 44 sacks and 77 hits in 2010, Wiley brought the boys back to the basics. Lowest man is the victor. Body still works one way, and if you can leverage the human body into a position, okay, where it can't create any power, then you won. Complementing Wiley's simple strategy, Wisniewski brings his former all-pro perspective, having stood in his lineman's shoes, literally. It's not an easy job to be an offensive lineman. You have to build that, that camaraderie, that togetherness, the feeling that we're a bunch of brothers out there, and you really have to care for one another. And uh, guys that I've played with, they can call me in the middle of the night, I'll be there to help them, whatever it takes. That X factor of accountability is building, and the results are evident. There's a handoff. McFadden gets the edge 30, 35, 40. We're all close. We all have, have fun together, and that makes it you don't want to mess up because you don't want to let that guy down. Steve's done a lot of stuff as a player that I can pull information out of him. And I've done a lot of stuff as a coach that he pulls out of me. And with Bob Wiley in his fourth decade of coaching, beyond experience, he has true wisdom. I find in life that people don't think big enough because they're afraid to fail. Don't worry about failing. You know what I mean? Play the next play. You know what I mean? It's the only way you're going to get any better. 
While the players have the luxury to learn from their mistakes, it's imperative they know their role. It's hard, you know, when you're out of breath and trying to call plays, and, but, you know, it's a job that I love, and, I, you know, I like doing it. I'm, I'm just glad I got help from the coaches I got this year. Above all else, there's a humbleness to the Raiders' offensive line leaders, a quality that resonates with their charges on the field. You always listen. It's one thing I learned in coaching. I don't have all the answers. The Papa know everything. You can't learn anything new. Everybody in line loves those two guys, and they and they love us too. So they put us to work. We want them to have the best offensive line in football, and they want us to be the best offensive line in football. So we have a good marriage so far. Doing that, I showed you that for a reason, okay? There was no off season. You heard the kids. You saw some of the drills and some of the things. Here's some of the stuff that was accomplished last year, okay? Uh, we were 29th in sacks, okay? And we finished fourth. And then seventh in sacks per pass play. 29 to four, seventh in sacks per pass play. Okay? Uh, the line rushed, I guess, the year before was 3.1 yards on first down. We were 4.9 over five with the penalty yards, okay? McFadden led the league in rushing until he got hurt for the first seven games. Okay. We were uh, second in the total number of 20 plus yard runs. We were tied for thirds and run over 40 yards and tied for eighth in rushes over 50 yards. Okay. We reduced the number of quarterback hits from 121 to 62. Okay. We were 91% efficient on the goal line, 86% efficient in short yardage. Okay. We were number one in two minutes scoring. Number one in two minutes scoring. Okay. And in the two minute scoring drill, all the drills, we only went up two sacks. We only gave up 20, 12 overall as an offensive line, 25 total. Okay. Uh, we were named the Madden Protectors of the Week in Week 6. Okay. Uh, in the Cleveland Browns game, uh, Stefan Wisniewski, a rookie, made the Pro Football Weekly All-Rookie Team. Okay. Michael Bush ran for 977 yards, only played in 10 games. Okay. He should have had easily 1,000. Okay. Uh, so there, there were things that we did okay last season but no off season how did you do that how did you get them you know so i'm going to tell you how it is in the first time i meet with them okay this is my very first meeting. you guys are my guys okay for the very first meeting first time we all get together okay and there's things that happen in that first meeting that when i introduce this I talked to the head coach about it, I talked to the offensive coordinator, and I said, this is something we should do and teach, and the offensive coaches bought into it, okay? And it kind of filtered through the offensive uh, meeting rooms, and I'm gonna proceed with this. IBM brought me in to talk to 100 of the top executives about some of these things. Why they did that, I have no idea. They got a lot of money to waste, but they did, okay? All right, obviously you know where you are here, okay? Very first thing. Leave your ego at the door, okay? First, first thing I think, leave it at the door. Don't bring it into the room because we're all in this together, okay? I'm gonna learn from you guys, you guys are gonna learn from me, okay? You guys have ideas, I'll listen, okay? There's certain things that I want you to do to live in the form, in the, in the foundation of it, as we create the foundation to go, okay? And I give credit where credit's due, okay? Billy Muir, I love that, this is from his mother. The problem with knowing everything is you can't learn anything new. So the play is you guys don't know everything, I don't know everything. If I don't know something, I'll make sure that you have that information by the time you get on that practice field. I'll make sure that that happens, okay? The other thing I'm gonna add to this, okay, is this statement. It's what you learn after you know everything that counts. It's what you learn after you know everything that counts. You know, I'm thinking, I used to have a thing on my refrigerator when my daughter was growing up that says, ask your teenagers now why they still know everything, okay, to get the point across, okay? So you, you don't know it all, okay? I don't know it all. But together, we're gonna learn how to do this, okay? Dick Vermeil, do the right things right. That's a simple thing, do the right things. What do I mean? Do the right things right. Watch your guys stretch. Everybody stretches their guys before practice in this room. Watch them stretch. Okay, I'll bet you any money that they're laying on the ground, they're talking to the guy next to them, 
They're trying to figure out what kind of design that fucking Okay? I'm telling you. Now, they're stretching. They're doing the right thing, but are they doing it right? Watch it. Watch it. Okay? Do the right things right. And when? What's important now? What's important right now at this moment? The toughest thing to teach them is how to stay in the moment. The toughest thing, I think, to teach any professional is how to stay in a moment, okay, at any level, okay, I should say in any sports, how to stay in that moment, because what happens is they call a play. Now, I always have the offensive linemen organize their thoughts on the way to the line of scrimmage. You call a play, the first question they ask themselves is, who do I have to block? All right, who do I have to block? The second question is, what can the defense do to me in the configuration that they line up in? Okay, and the third question is, how am I going to get the job done? What line call am I going to make? Am I going to stump my right foot, my left foot? Where am I going to put my helmet? Am I going to work with the center? Am I working with the tackle? Is the tight end blocking down? We pulling it? How am I going to get this thing done? Okay, those, every play, they ask themselves that three questions, and they ask them those three questions on the way to the line of scrimmage, not when they get there. When they get there, it's too late. Okay, so on the way to the line of scrimmage, they're organizing their thoughts. Now the ball snaps. Win or lose the play. Will you make the block or you don't make the block? I'm talking to you as line coaches, okay? All right? You need to have a mindset where you get rid of it. You learn from it, okay? The whistle blows, the whistle tells you to finish, it doesn't tell you to stop, it tells you to finish, okay? You can be as upset with yourself as you want to be, but when you get back into that huddle, right, and the quarterback says, I got it, you get rid of it. Quarterback says it's a start and stop point here, guys. I got it, you flush it. Okay, you get rid of it. Okay, you learn from it and you get rid of it because it's lost in time forever. What's going to happen in the future, you have no idea. So the only thing that you can control is what's happening right at this point, right now. That's the only thing that you have control of. Okay, one's lost forever, the next one you don't know about, but it's what's happening now. What's happening right now, what's important right now is what counts. You try to teach that to them because the male ego takes over and you win or lose the block. Okay, when you lose, you worry about, oh, I'm gonna get that son of a gun the next time. I'm worried about kicking the hell out of that guy instead of play the next play. Play the next play. That's the only thing that matters. You'll hear me in practice Yell them, play the next play, because they're talking. I said, forget it. Play the next play. There's nothing you can do about that one. Play the next play. We'll correct it on tape, on film, in the meeting room. Play the next play, because that's what's going to happen in the game. Okay? Play the next play and keep on going. What's important now? Okay? Next thing. Communication is the key to our success. I'm going to tell you what I expect from you. You learn how to turn it on and off. You will become excellent communicators. You will be tested on what you know at any time. I will coach what I know. I will not try to bullshit you. If I don't know the answer, I will tell you. I, I will find the answer and give it to you before we go to practice. Okay? I will find the, uh, my job is to bring the Oakland Raiders offensive line together every single day, every single game. Okay? Communication, guys. Communication. Where's my little guy He's supposed to be pushing this button here for me? Does the player know what to do? What I'm looking for. Does the player know what to do? Key deal. Okay? Is the player trying to do what is the player's coach to do? This is what I'm looking for. Okay? Are they in shape, shape? Because I ain't playing. I haven't taken a snap in 40 years and I don't intend to take a snap. Okay? If they're in shape. Okay? So, those are the things that I look for in my eyes. Go ahead. Okay? I go by what I see. You are what you are on tape. You can't hide anything. They got free. You know, coach Davis, God bless his soul. Okay? Coach Davis had in the practice. Right? He had cameras in the training camp all over the place. He was watching the whole practice. You couldn't turn around. It was camera guys in your drill, right? Video in every drill you had so he could watch it. Okay? So he could watch it. Okay? So you can't hide anything. You're on tape. Okay? If you don't know what to do, and you're not doing what is coached, then we can't win with you. This is my very first meeting. We can't win with you. Jim Mahalchuk's laughing back there about Coach Davis because he was in it. Hey, those cameras are all over the place, okay? All right? If we can't win with you, we're going to find someone else that we can win with. This is my very first meeting. You guys are my guys. Here we go. 
Football is a team sport. It's a game based entirely on situations. Okay? You must play at the highest level. Make a commitment. Team success is prerequisite to individual success. Okay? It's based on, entirely on situations. Red zone, short yardage, goal line. First down, second down, third down, third and short, third and long. Okay? The whole game is based on situations. What do I do in these situations? Right? You need to teach them what to do in those situations. Next. First fundamentals of football, there are no guarantees. There are no guarantees in this sport. Okay? There is no guarantees. Last year, okay, we lost the whole deal by one point, 29 to 28. Detroit went 98 yards on us, right? Beat us 29 to 28, okay? We kick a field goal in the first quarter, right? We kick a field goal in the first quarter, okay? Right? The Bengals stay at home. Sorry, Paul, but you would have stayed at home, okay? Right? Detroit, Denver would have never went. We would have won the AFC West, okay? And we would have went. That didn't happen, okay? So for being at that height, okay, I now have an unemployment card that the state of California gives you so I can collect my $450 every week. Okay, so the game is really tight, okay? It can, it, there's no guarantees in the game, guys. There's no guarantees in the game. But you have to play it at a high performance level. Okay, next. Okay, come together through communication. Barriers of communication is fear, prejudice, habit, and language. Those are barriers that you need to overcome. You get the guys in your room, they're fearful. They don't want to talk to each other because they're afraid, okay? There's prejudice, the veterans against the rookies, okay? They do things by habit, okay? Well, why do you do that? Well, because this is what we've always done. It becomes a habit, okay? Well, winning's a habit and so is losing, okay? Language, different language skills. The key to success, 85% is personal skills, 50% is technical skills. 80% of your life is based on communications. All you guys in this room, okay, and I'm included in it, okay, spend most of our time chasing technique. What for, first foot to step with? What do I put my hands? Where do my eyes go? Weight and balance, center gravity to my double under, single under. Okay, Are you chasing stuff that happens 15 to 20 percent of the time, right? Instead of work on stuff that happens 80 percent of the time, they got to communicate with one another. They got to know the defense. Right, that kind of communication is going to spread to the backs and the quarterback, right? It's going to spread from them to you on the sideline. It's going to come from the press box down to you. That's what you need to work on. Okay, those type of things. 80% of your life is based on that. We chase 20% of step with first. Okay, next. Building habits by always asking questions. 85% of is communication, there's honesty, and there's integrity. That's what we're going to build in the offensive line room. We're going to be able to communicate, we're going to be honest with one another, and we're going to have some integrity about it. So when you come off the sideline, don't say, you know, oh yeah, I got him, coach, and then I look at the tape on Monday morning, and you completely miss Okay, you tell me exactly what's going on out there. Okay, here we go. The building a filter system, there's four different kinds of communication. There's phatic communication, small talk, a wave of casual meeting, you know, you're walking down a car and you see a player coming at you, okay, and you kind of, hey, how you doing, John, how you doing, great, great, and you keep on going. That's phatic communication. This cathartic communication, it's negative, discontent, bitching, complaining, kind of what your wife does when you get home late at night, right? Uh, how come you went home at 5 o'clock for dinner? It ain't going to happen, right? It's not going to happen. Persuasive communication, teaching, trying to improve them, move them in the right direction, okay? And then there's informative communication, information you can see, what I want them to do. Those are four types of communication, okay? They have to know when to turn it on and when to turn it off. They have to know when to filter the good stuff and keep it, okay, and when to filter the bad stuff and get rid of it, okay? And we talk about that in the meeting, you guys are my guys, okay? Be consistent as a player and I will be consistent as a coach. All right, Paul. Freedom to perform at the highest level of football is done through communication and preparation. Okay, I expect you to be, have the highest standard of preparation and you will be tested. Sometimes they're walking in a car or I walk into the locker room and I'll ask the, the center, how are we going to pick up that will free safety blitz this week on 60 protection? Okay, and he better have an answer. You know, whether it's the X adjusting, whether the back, whatever it is, he better have the answer to it. 
Okay, what are the things in communication that make a difference? Example, Wayne is down, okay? No, we don't say that. We say Wayne is not in the game, okay? We will build trust in one another. You will learn how to think under pressure. Now, what do I mean Wayne is down? It's like saying Peyton Manning's down. Your quarterback's down. No, your quarterback's not in the game. There's a little different thought process that goes with the rest of the team. Oh, Peyton Manning's down. Oh, shit, how the hell are we going to win the game? Right? That goes through the whole team. No, Peyton's down. He may come back. He's down right now. I mean, he's, he's not in the game. He's not down. He's not in the game. Excuse me. Okay, there's a different thought process there, guys. How do you communicate with him? Go ahead, Paul. Jazz sessions. This is from the North American Plains Indians. You score a touchdown. There's an interception, kickoff return for a touchdown, punt return for a touchdown. Okay? These are examples of jazz sessions. Go congratulate your buddy who scored. Celebrate with your teammates. If you watched the Raiders play last year when we scored, you watched the offensive line will be the first ones down or pretty close to the first ones down in the end zone. Because I kind of grade them on Hollywood's. Hollywood is, if I stop the, at the end of the play, when I stop the play at the end, are you in that picture? Are you in that picture when I stop the play on tape? Okay? Get into Hollywood, okay? Celebrate with your buddies. I hate the guys that score touchdowns and they point to themselves. And they, it's like they did everything. There's 11 other guys that help you get there. Okay? Go ahead. Work together. Gung-ho. To work together in harmony. Free to core. Elements of perfect harmony which help make success having fun is the dynamic and vital substance which the Marines are built on. They work together. They're having fun. A shared devotion to a cause. What more shared devotion to a cause do we have as offensive line coaches than to keep the son of a bitches off the quarterback? Okay? And why is that so important? Because when you start an offensive drive in the National Football League, you have a 25% chance to score. That's it. 25% chance when you're going to score three or six. If you get one sack, it goes down to 4%. 4%. Okay, that's the discrepancy in it, okay? So why do we work on keeping the quarterback vertical? Okay, we don't need them horizontal. We need them to stay up. You know, do some teams overcome that 4%? Yeah, some teams throw a ball on a field. The percentages are against you, okay, when you get that sack. Okay, the spree de corps, the common feeling existing in members of a group and inspiring a story God for the honor of that group. A shared devotion to a cause. Elements of perfect harmony. The dominant feeling on the battlefield, on the playing field, is one of loneliness, right? The feeling that you have for your teammates get you through this. In the Marines, in combat, they don't care about the ground that they're on. They don't care about they're fighting for the United States against Iraq or wherever, okay? You know what they care about? The more, number one thing that those guys care about right next to him, about getting that guy out of there alive. Okay, how's that guy going to react? Okay, that's what they care about. Your guys need to care about the same thing. You need to care about the guy next to you. Okay, he, you, get, you need to know what he's going to do before he does it. Sometimes you can't get the line call out, okay, but you got to know what the guy's going to do when the ball snapped. Okay, because the clock's coming down. That's more important than what foot do I step with on 16 Mike. Okay, go ahead. Genghis Khan, I love this one. He had 130,000 men. That's all he had. He conquered 5,500 miles. That's like starting in New York, going across the United States, and 2,500 more miles into the Pacific Ocean. Right? He did that in two and a half years. Right? They could ride 70 to 120 miles a day on horseback. Any one of those guys could play for me. I don't even know what they, what they, those guys can play for me. Guys that can do that can play for me, right? They had to be experts in their field and archery and horseback riding, okay? They used to have a drill. It lasted three months, one drill. They heard all the animals for 200 miles into a canyon. They'd split themselves up into teams and they'd go down and slaughter the animals and see who slaughtered the most in teams. Ah, you talk about endurance, you talk about pressure, you talk about skills, okay? Those guys can play, okay? Those guys can hunt. Okay, and that's what I want the line to do. Okay, next. Here, key deal, group chemistry. Okay, the group chemistry becomes the most important thing, more important than any blocking scheme. 
What you create in your room with your players is more important than any X and O that you can draw on the board. I'm serious, no bullshit, okay? With all those X's and O's, they're all great, and we need them. You know what I mean? And everybody has playbooks that are this thick, okay? Uh, the chemistry you create with your players in that meeting room is more important than any of that bullshit, okay? I won't always have the answers. When something goes wrong, it's my fault, okay? You look at my guys, it's my fault. I didn't coach you well enough, okay? I refuse to let the offensive line be blamed without me being blamed, okay? I will listen to your thoughts and ideas. Doesn't mean I'm going to act on them, but I'll listen to them because okay, they do come up with some pretty good shit. Okay? You need to be tough and tough-minded. Everybody needs to improve their hands. All pro players play too high. I can look at everybody's tape here and tell you all the same thing. You all need to improve your hands, you all play too high. Everybody in the room. There's not one guy in this room that doesn't escape that. Okay? We'll be an offensive, okay? As an offensive line, we'll be paused, we'll be physical, and we'll finish everything we do. Okay, this is something I got way back, way from Sam Weiss, way back in the 80s when Jimmy was with the, the Bengals, okay? And it makes sense. Be poised. It's not always going to be perfect. It's not going to go 100% all the time. Keep your poise. Okay, stay in the moment. Okay, be physical. We like physical guys. Paul in, I love physical guys. Okay, you ain't going to take one of those guys that look like a Victoria's Secret model jumping over the bags. You know, they all look good in their underwear, but you don't know they want to play. Okay, it's a deal. Okay, go ahead. Right. Yeah, your wife won't let you either. Okay, here we go. Treat people with courtesy on and off the field. There are no details too small. And the other one from Jerry Rice, I love this one. You want to get a little better, work a little harder. It ain't rocket science, guys. You want to be a better coach, work a little harder at it. Okay, you want to be a better player, work a little harder at it. Go ahead. Be known for something. Be known for something. Finish in the blocks. Okay? I like to be you know, hey, you played against that rated offensive line, son of a bitch. Those guys finish. You know what I mean? Be known for something. Like, those guys can run block. Those guys can pass block. Whatever it is, they all line up neat across the line of scrimmage. Be known for something. Okay? They look good getting off the bus. You're known for something. Okay? The ability to play, the ability for you to play free and hard lies in the preparation you put into it. You have to make a commitment. Four things. Come off the ball. Right? Take your correct departure angle, step with the correct foot, block the correct guy, finish the block. Pretty simple shit. Okay? Here we go. Work a little harder. Work a little harder and a little better and find the right guys and get after their ass. Okay? You learn to work in a demeanor. You all heard us talk about this. You will have an attitude, okay, when you come to work. We're in the drive and lift, okay? When blocking the linebackers, bend your knees, okay? Get a base on contact, okay? Be under control, have an attitude, train yourself to have body control. The toughest game we play is against our own guys, okay? Get the best practice pitcher you can. Get the best, so whoever's drawing those cards, you draw those cards to get the best practice pitcher you can and put them in a, a good look that they're gonna see on Sunday. Next. Power of the objective, achieve competitive greatness. Great is a sense of destiny, okay? No matter who you are, Okay, no matter what you do, leave your mark. You must have a clean-cut objective, then you must have a step-by-step -step progression on how you're going to achieve that objective. Right now, that may be just coming to practice every day. What are you going to give them as an objective that day? Improve your inside hand on the run game, okay? Step with the correct foot or kick step on the pass game, okay? Give them something for that day, whatever they don't do well, so when you look at the tape at the end of that day, they've gotten better. Only this much. It doesn't have to be this much. That much for that day is good. This one here is what I really, really brought into this, okay? And kind of just started some, probably about six, eight years ago. I wish I would have known it early in my career. The four stages of the learning, everybody learns this way. Everybody in the room learns this way. Okay, nobody gets beyond it the way you learn here. Okay, you want to get the unconscious competence is where you want to be. Okay, but you've got to go through these four stages. The unconscious incompetence. The player has no idea that the skill exists. He has no idea that that's when they get him. I tell him, you got, I'm going to teach you stuff you never had before. You heard him say they had all these new techniques, right? They never had them before. We got there. Okay? Right? 
right? They're unconscious and they're incompetent in my eyes, okay? Now the next step, right, in order for you to make them better, you have to show them what their deficiencies are. So not only are they unconscious and they're incompetent, okay, you gotta teach them the deficiencies because now when you show them a new skill, you're gonna show them how that skill is gonna make them better. Okay, so now the player becomes aware of the skill exists and now you're teaching it to him. Okay, so now he's conscious but he's still incompetent because he can't friggin' do it. That's the second stage, okay? The third stage, the player can perform the skill reliably at will, but he still has to think about it. Okay, the driver, I put my first step here and double under and then get dick to dick with the guy, okay, I lift, he has to think about it. Ah, he hasn't gotten there yet, okay? Right, you gotta get him to this stage here. Unconscious confidence, the skill is so practiced that it enters the unconscious part of the brain and it becomes second nature. How many guys drove here today? Raise your hand. Did you think about it? No. You got in the car, you put the seatbelt on, you started the car up and you drove it. You never thought about it. How many guys got up this morning, went to the bathroom and turned the light on? Right? Did you think about it? No. Because it's in your subconscious. You just did it. You got to get your players to play like that. Right? And it can't be Okay, from one to three, or two to four, or one to four, it doesn't go like that. It's gonna be one, two, three, and four. Okay, next, Paul. Here's what I believe, right here. You read all this, coaches commonly assume the player is in stage two and focus his efforts towards stage three, when often the players are still in stage one. You say, well, you're making mistakes, I'm telling you guys. Okay, the coach assumes the player is aware of the skill of existence, nature, relevance, deficiencies, and benefit offered from the acquisition of the new skill, whereas the players, at stage one, unconscious and confidence have none of these things in place and will not be able to address achieving conscious <coughs> confidence until they become conscious and fully aware of their own incompetence. Okay? This is the fundamental reason for the failure of a lot of coaching and teaching. You try to move them too fast, they haven't got it yet. They can't go from one to two. They're still in one. You get them in two, they can't go from two to three. You assume they can, they can't. Okay, next. Go again, and this hole explains it. Go ahead, one more. All right, get out of it. Go ahead. Okay, manage your behavior to meet the challenge at hand. Great teams are aggressive, com competent, and disciplined. Inspiration comes from everybody. People that produce great results feel good about themselves. Okay, next. The power of endurance. Inside of all of us, there's an extraordinary person waiting to be released, okay? Unless you go past your personal best, you never release that person. Unless that player goes by his personal best, he never gets any better. Okay, that's why those guys at Delta Force, you live in a world of suck, okay? Because on game day, when it happens in combat, it slows everything down and it becomes a little bit easier, okay? Football is a high performance business. Men who have talent and don't use it fail. Men who have talent and use it have failed. Men who have talent and use it to the fullest extent will experience satisfaction beyond no other that few men ever know. Okay, go get them to go by their personal best, whatever that personal best is. Go ahead, Paul. Pain, there's two types of pain. Pain of discipline. I run my guys on gassers, believe it or not. They line up in the 15-yard line after practice and they go, they run a gasser back across the field. They get in shape, no, that has nothing to do with it. Right, I'm seeing how mentally tough they are. I want to see them line up and be disciplined before the line, run the gasser, touch their line, come back, finish ahead of the line, don't finish early, to see how mentally tough that they can become. Okay? That's the pain of discipline. That pain is going to go away. Okay? That pain is going away. They're going to go in, they're going to get in the cold tub, the hot tub, they're going to take a shower, and the pain is going to go subside. It's going to go away. The pain of regret lasts a lifetime. You're in the Super Bowl and you're supposed to block the nose guard and you turn out on the defensive end and that son of a bitch makes the play and you lose the Super Bowl, that pain from that mistake lasts a lifetime. Okay? Running back, running with the ball, puts it on the ground. The other team picks it up, goes the other way, beats you. That pain lasts a lifetime. Okay? We're going to work together at a high level to habits. Okay, go ahead. Get the fight started. Now all this is... Okay, get your technique faster than the other guy. Better leverage, finish longer, play harder, be poised, 
okay? When your life is on the line, you have to have courage. Without fear, there can be no courage. You have to be disciplined and trust your body. You have to make it happen, okay? Headman Maurice Magandhi, right? He said, get the fight started in small groups. Get the fight started in your room. Get the fight started in your room. I watch my guys. They say, don't fight on a football field. If we don't fight in training camp, there's something. If we don't get in a fight with the defensive linemen in training camp, there's a problem. You're going to have a problem. Okay? Get the fight started. Get the fighting. And if I see my guys fighting, I watch them. And if they're on the top, I don't break it up. I ain't going to break it up anyway. Okay? All right, next. All right, points of leadership. Communication, self-control, high standards, tolerance, and patience. Be decisive, social force, trust, ability to organize time and profit. Priorities, intense desire to compete, be considerate of others, create enthusiasm, be on time. Okay, if you have a problem and you will, attack the problem and keep the person out of it. Attack the problem and keep the person out of it. Okay, know the players. Somebody in their life is more powerful than you are. Know your players and find out who that person is, because if you have a problem, you may have to call his pop one or football coach, because that guy has more control of him than you do. Find out who that guy is. Okay, next. Okay, general thoughts, just kind of loop them all to get here, go ahead. All right, our single back protection, go ahead and go through this. They always put in one toughest protection. Okay, go, go, go. Okay, thoughts on leadership. Okay, and this is 66 thoughts on leadership. I'm not going over them. If anybody wants this, okay, if anybody wants this, okay, or you give me your email address, okay, and I'll email you this whole thing. Okay, you can get it on the DVDs that John has, okay. But that's my first meeting. It's what I go through with the players, okay? I don't talk about the techniques. I, don't, I talk about this stuff on the very first meeting because I believe this is more important than the techniques. And it took me a long time to learn it, okay? And it showed up, showed up when I coached up in Canada. I did the same thing. Some of those guys couldn't even speak English, but they got it. They got it, okay? Last year was a great example of the whole ball of wax, right? We didn't have them. We had a new offense. We had new coaches on offense. Okay? We finished ninth in offense in the league. Okay? They bought into it. They got it. The communication was fantastic. Okay? So with that, okay, I'm going to let you go, and I'm going to turn this over to Paul Alexander. Okay? And Paul